Well, good evening, guys. I wanted to remake this video that I put up earlier today. I just felt the need to put this video up as soon as we could. I could when I saw this word come out from um, from Julie Wedby. I mistakenly said the word was from um, Warrior Princess. It's not. It's from Julie Wedby from I Am Calling. Behold, I Come. And I want to go over this prophetic word and just review a few things and speak to some other things that um, I've talked about over the last few months that um, I think are so extremely important to share. I've talked about this in the past, but I've actually updated this document. Um, I found uh, what I would call a, uh, I wouldn't say an error, I was misplacing the time of some certain events. And we're going to talk about Hosea 9 versus Hosea 5. And in Hosea 9, we're going to get into this. This, I think these events are after the rapture because it gets even more, more difficult to read. And once again, this is never preached from the pulpit in any church. Okay, so um, if I go back to the prophetic word that uh, I had given earlier today, um, I'll, you can download this or you can go to the link. And uh, it came out on September 17th, Julie Wedby. Um, Basically, it's information that we all know. And the time has come for all to be fulfilled. You know, she's basically telling us in this word that um, the leaders in America do not publicly cry out to me in prayer for the nation, nor do they stand for truth based on my holy word. I hear words such as, we will rebuild and restore, but I tell you, this will not be. For as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, so shall I allow the judgments to sweep this nation from coast to coast. As Babylon the whore will fall, you will not rise again to a mighty nation, but I will burn you with fire and destroy you with terrible winds and floods, bringing great devastation to your land. I will set you as an example to the whole world. What will be the end of all those who mock and scoff me and blatantly disregard my commandments? Okay, so um, I'm just going to stop here for a minute. I put a comment. I put a comment where I basically said, Trump's make America great again will not occur. You know, the whole hype. I mean, obviously, I, I could not bring myself to vote for a um, an abortionist on the left. And I, I wasn't a big Trump fan, but I think Trump, he's trying to do the right thing. It seems like it. I do not see him connected up with the evil ones but you know time will tell um but this idea of putting your faith in trump like he's going to make america great again that is just you're missing all the aspects of end time biblical prophecy if you think the united states is going to get uh made me america great again that's just that's crazy but anyway um shaking is going to become shaking is going to come as violently responds to my commands for justice. I can raise up nations and I can bring them down. I will shake the heavens and I will shake the earth. And all will be undone. A serious and dire message this is indeed. But I have spoken and the time has come. I hear the heart cries of those who seek me. That would be us. And love me with all that they have. And my precious ones shall see much. But only for a short time. Then I will draw you to myself means that's rapture do not despair my faithful ones do not lose hope for you for you know that I must do what I must do I do these things to test and to measure the heart of, and the motive my, I do these things to measure the heart and motives of all men okay you guys can read the rest of this stuff but uh, the point is he's coming when you know, there's a lot of folks that are talking about the 19th as being a day for orientation or training for 144,000. That's a possibility. I, I don't know. Uh, but I want to talk about the idea of Babylon. We're being referenced. This country is directly referenced as being Babylon. Now, I've done a lot of studies uh, on, this web on this web channel about who the United States is. And I want to show you guys something about the ancient tribes of Israel. Okay, so after after Israel came into the land, after you know the Exodus, they came into the land with they were spent forty years in the wilderness, and Joshua, Yeshua, Joshua brought them into the land. They divided up the land of Canaan, which became the land of milk and honey. This became 
the nation of Israel. And look how it formed. It formed into 12 tribes, but two of the tribes, Manasseh, had an east and a west. So that ended up being 13 tribes, or 13 states, or 13 colonies? Could, could you say that? Could you say 13 states? Because that's what it is. If you count them up, it's 13. Take a look at the United States when it formed. 13 colonies. And who would have thunk that? And look at the coincidence. Look at Massachusetts up here. See Massachusetts? Massachusetts had two territories. I have a north one or a west one and an east one or a north and a south one. Both of these were Massachusetts. Look at that word, Massachusetts. Let's go back to Israel when it first formed. Massachusetts. Manasseh. Manasseh. Isn't that strange? You think? Now this was, this map is 1300 BC. This map, 1776 AD. So what I'm getting at is there is something about the United States that we have missed all these years about who we really are. Now I will give some justification on who the United States is. But we are 50. Now 50 in the Bible is a jubilee. It's like a, a completion. You know, we you know the largest denomination dollar we have is a hundred dollar bill. But it's almost like in the Bible, God uses 50 as the largest like chunk of numbers, if that makes any sense to you. And that's how many states we are. Like we're full. We're full at 50. So uh, I've done this study many times where I've talked about this. And this is one of the first things I came up with. I'm not going to go through it again, but you can download this. If you're new to my channel, Genesis 48, <clears throat> if you look at what Jacob proclaims, I'm sorry, this is Jacob in Genesis 48 making a proclamation. Jacob said that Manasseh would become a people, a nation, and he shall also be called great. Nevertheless, his younger brother, Ephraim, or Ephraim, shall be greater than he is, and Ephraim's offspring shall become a multitude of nations. And that word multitude of nations means full of nations. So Ephraim shall become a nation full of nations. And you can download this document. You can ask these four questions. And the answer to each of these questions, based upon this verse 19, are found right here. These are questions that could be answered by a sixth grader who could knows a little bit about the world. And the only two nations on the planet that answer yes to every single one of these questions is the USA and Great Britain. The USA is Ephraim. And Great Britain is Manasseh. The USA is the modern representation of the tribe of Ephraim. But it also seems like we have become Babylon. And that's another video I can make. But in 1947, the Nazis, the ex-Nazis from Germany, sided with the, I would say, a certain group in the United States to form the CIA, which essentially took over the United States on September 18th, 1947, 70 years ago today. So for 70 years, this country has been led by a shadow government outside of the Constitution. We know that Israel, Judah, 2,500 years ago, was put into exile for 70 years and they were freed. That's why I think tomorrow is going to bring something. I don't know. I'm not setting dates. So the United States is Ephraim. And when you... When you know that, you can read the Old Testament prophets and know what's going to happen to Ephraim. Okay. All right, so uh, where was I going to go next? I wanted to talk about the point of this video here, guys. Let me go back to this prophetic word. Is this is real. This stuff's going to happen. And when these events begin, God is going to come take the children. I've talked about this many times. And... Um, I'm trying to find right here. I updated this document because I had something a little bit wrong. Uh, one of my com comment guys pointed it out to me, and we're going to get into it here in Hosea 9. But I think Hosea 9 is after the rapture. Hosea 5 is when the rapture starts. So let's go through these these scriptures now. These scriptures 
I found these scriptures in the Bible because I listened to a modern day prophet, two of them, Wendy Lee and Barb from 278 Pike Lake. They had prophetic words a few years ago where God said he's going to take all the children. I could pull the prophetic words up. You've seen them in the past. I've talked about them many times. God is going to remove the children from this planet, I would say, of the ages of accountability, which six or seven or eight, down to zero. He's going to take them, and that's going to be a wake-up call. He's not going to allow the little ones to experience judgment, let alone the wrath. Okay, so if we start with Jeremiah 50, it says, Behold, like a lion... Coming up from the thicket of the Jordan against a perennial pasture, I, the Lord, suddenly will make them run away, run away from her. That would be Babylon. <clears throat> and I will appoint over who, whom I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd, what pastor, what weak-minded, non-biblical pastor can stand before me? Therefore, hear the plan the Lord has. That's the plan to save the little ones. The plan the Lord has made against Babylon, surely the little ones, that's the children of the flock, of society shall be dragged away, taken. Hosea 5, Hosea 5, 14 is just after, just after the, the countries of the world moved a landmark where they moved a land dividing line. We'll look at that in a minute. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, the United States, a young lion to the house of Judah, modern day Israel. I, even I, will tear and go away. It's taking the children and carry off and no one can rescue. See that line reference in both of these? Isaiah 47, these two things shall come to you in a moment. This is, by the way, this is to the daughter of Babylon. These two things shall come to you in a moment. In one day, the loss of children. Isaiah 49, 22 to, 22 to 23. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations as judgment's coming. I will raise my signal to the peoples. That's a sign, some huge sign in the sky. And they, I would say the angels from Matthew 24, shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be their foster fathers, and queens their nursing mothers. See, these are little kids. Some of them are still nursing. If you go to Jeremiah 2, I'm sorry, Joel chapter 2, verse 16, I think it says, gather the nursing infants. Here's where they're being gathered and gathered and taken. And then the captives of the mighty, the people that are taken prisoner in a deep underground military bases that they're going to go run to. The people that are doing the cleaning, the cooking, their children, they're going to be taken. The prey, the hot, they're all going to be rescued. For I will contend with those who contend with you, and I, the Lord, will save your children. Jeremiah 10, same thing. My tent, this is when the when the, the uh, calamities come. My tent is destroyed. All my cords are broken. My children have all gone from me, for they are not. That word in Hebrew means gone, not killed, not hacked up, gone. Disappeared. Jeremiah 31, same thing. A, a cry of voice in Ramah. It's Israel, lamentation, weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted because they've been taken. For they're no more. Not murdered. No more. Okay, so the, the Lord is going to come. He's going to take all these kids. He's going to rock the world. Here's the scriptures. It's right here. If you can read the Bible, study this, and get the... Ask the Holy Spirit to confirm this. Now, Hosea 9, I'm not going to go through all the chapters, but Hosea 9, it seems, is after the rapture. This is where it gets a little confusing and hard to understand for me. I'm not completely sure what is going on here as far as the timing. But you can see here, the days of punishment have come. The days of recompense have come. Israel should know it. The prophet is a fool. The man of spirits mad. Because of the great iniquity and hatred, the prophet is the watchman of Ephraim, is with God, yet a fowler snare on all his ways. And there is hatred in the house of God. There's going to be hatred in the churches when these kids are taken. The lukewarm and the non-believers are going to show up at the church. There won't be an attendance issue then, packed full. And they're going to want to know why did their God that they talk about, their loving Jesus, why he took all their kids? They're not going to, they're just going to be confused. And the pastors are going to be dumbfounded to give responses. They'll just simply, they probably won't even be able to talk like Zechariah couldn't talk when the angel said his wife's going to be pregnant. So I continue on here. He will remember their iniquity and he will punish their sins. Like grapes in the wilderness, I found Israel. Like the fruit on the fig tree in their first season, I saw their fathers. Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. 
no birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Even if they bring up the children, I will bereave them. I will take them till there is none left. Woe to them when I depart from them. Ephraim, this is where it gets hard to understand. Ephraim, as I have seen, was a young palm planted in a meadow. But Ephraim must lead his children out to slaughter. Or, but Ephraim must lead his children out to him who slaughters. Now, well, let, me, let me continue. Give them, O Lord, what will you give? The Lord says, I will give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. So pregnant women, the left behind pregnant women will lose their children in utero. Because of the wickedness of their deeds, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more, and all their princes are rebels. Ephraim is stricken, their roots dried up. They shall not bear fruit. Even if, even though they give birth, I will put their beloved children to death. Now, when the Lord puts somebody to death, he's taken the spirit to be with him. But for those left behind, seeing the the dead dead child is going to be a very difficult thing. But you know that child. It's not going to end up in hell. That child's going to be taken in spirit to be with their father in heaven. Jesus says, let the little children come to me. For such as these belong to the kingdom of heaven. So when you look at this, do not... Do not feel sorrow for the children, these little ones. They won't know any of this. They will be yanked immediately into the spirit realm into heaven. It's the people who are left behind, the ones who were, who didn't care about abortions, voted the same politicians and didn't demand to have the laws changed, sat idly by while all these things went down in the U.S. The Lord is going to let the Lord is going to give them what they deserve. These people. So. That's where I see this. Now, there was a guy named Ken Peters. And I was going to do a video of Ken Peters uh, at some point. Uh, I don't even have it here. But, and in the video, I'm sorry, in his vision, Ken Peters had a vision in 1981. And it was a vision of the tribulation. He was lukewarm. He woke up when he heard the uh, a trumpet blowing or a horn blowing. It seemed like it was right after the rapture right when the resurrection occurred and then the people left and he was there left behind and he said that there were no children between the ages of 2 and 13 anywhere so I almost think that the age that the children who are 2 this is speculating I think that at the time this goes down that the children who are between the ages of 2 and 13 they will fly away like a bird in the rapture. They will be taken till there is none left. But for the children who are under the age of two, which were there, Ken Peters said he saw children there, they were all taken out to the street corners and left in their bassinets and in their car seats. Now consider this. The children, he said, little babies, babies and toddlers up to two, were on the street corners in baby chairs and bassinets sitting there. And he was with a group of people that was going by and gathering them up and taking them to safety. But what would make people do that? So I read this right here. But Ephraim must lead his children out to one who slaughters. It's almost like in the vision that there was some law passed or something. To take your little babies out, you know, I'm just making, I'm, I'm, I'm winging this, guys. Why would he see that? And then the Lord says right here, he'll put their beloved children to death. It's a strange thing. I'll, I'll, I'll put up his word here in the next video, and you guys can read what he says. Um, but, hey guys, I just went and got the uh, the Ken Peters um, a vision. Here's a word document. I'll put it up too. It's 13 pages. This is what he said. He said a very unusual thing was occurring at this time on the earth. Babies were being abandoned just about everywhere. Almost on every street corner there were babies being abandoned, left in their little baby seats and baby baskets. This was a very strange because they were, they were anywhere from infancy to 16 to 18 months old. I could tell there were no, I could tell there were not any babies over the age of two. Now this is in the tribulation. This is not prior to the rapture. We began to pick up these children everywhere and began taking care of these children. 
He says he joined up with a group because they were the only ones that seemed to have any peace at any time during uh, anywhere on the earth. So when you read these scriptures and you think about it, this is Hosea 9. This is after the rapture, right? as the rapture happened. This is hard to comprehend what's going on here because he talks about taking all the kids and then the little ones are going to be put to death. I, so let me just jump to something else, guys. I'm going to just kind of jump around here. I'm going to go back to 9-11. I'm sorry I, I'm, I'm jumping backwards here. And I hope this is not too difficult to follow. On 9-11, I'm sorry, on September 12th, 2001, this man right here, Senator Tom Daschle, majority leader in the Senate, he gave the official response to the 9-11 attacks. Now, how many, how many verses... How many verses are in the Bible? Okay, here it is right here. There are 31,102 verses in the entire Bible. 31,102 verses. Look at the singular verse he chose to read on, on 9-12. Listen, listen to this. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedar. That is what we will do. We will rebuild and we will recover. The people of America will stand strong together. Okay, so you heard he picked the, the one verse in the Bible, Isaiah 9.10. Isaiah 9.10. Think about that, 9.10. It's almost like 9.11. Okay, I put it there for you. Now let's go to Isaiah. And let's see where this is. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with dress stones. The sycamore or the fig trees have been cut down, and we will replace with cedars. Well, there was a sycamore tree that was knocked down in, up in New York. And he says, we will rebuild. Who said this? This happened in 7, 740 B.C. to the northern kingdom of Israel, to Ephraim. Look what it says here. This is what Tom Daschle just said. Look what it says. And all the people will know, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who, in Samaria, who say in pride and their arrogance of heart. Ephraim? So this whole idea that I have about the United States being Ephraim, it's kind of funny how it turned out that way. Tom Daschle, the leader of Ephraim. So, and when you read it, look at the, the title here, Judgment on Arrogance and Oppression, about how they're going to rebuild. They're going to rebuild. And what does the prep, what does the prophetic word say? God speaking, I hear words such as, we will rebuild and restore, but I tell you this will not be. So, you, you got to get serious about this Ephraim stuff. It's right there in the Bible. You know, people talk about these prophetic words being nonsense. Yeah, okay, take it. Kick, kick the prophetic words to the, to the side of the road. Go to the Bible. And look what it says is going to go down with Ephraim. Let me show you here. I'm sorry, I got it right here. I'm taking a little bit too long. Ephraim. I know Ephraim. Israel, that's the West, is hidden from me. For now Ephraim has played the whore. Israel is defiled. Their pride testifies to my face. They stumble in their guilt. Judah, modern day Israel, stumbles with them. Ephraim shall become a desolation in the day of punishment. 
The princes of Judah have become like those who move a landmark. They, they're moving, they're, they're putting divide, they're going to divide up Israel. When all this goes down, Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment. Look, that Ephraim is the United States, guys. Tom Daschle, he speaks for Ephraim. When Ephraim saw a sickness and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to the Assyrian. That's the, that's, this is Assyria, the Assyrian. Who's the Assyrian, guys? We knew who that is. The guy that was elected twice. Now he's not the president, but he will be. He's of the seven, but he is the eighth. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim and a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will carry off and no one shall rescue. There's the kids being taken right there. Right after they move the landmark. And guess what they're going to be doing this week? They're going to, they're going to cry out peace and safety on what? Wednesday or Thursday? At the UN? So I didn't mean to ramble on here too long, guys. But um, This right here. That's who we are, guys. We're just like Israel. Modern, we're, we're the modern representation of Ephraim and Israel. And I would uh, challenge you to go read this word and take it to heart and share it with folks. You can download these scriptures and these documents under the comments. With that, guys, have a good day. God bless you.